we have to factor in the fact that uh, the labor demand is actually going to be also depressed by the increase in UI. That's because when you increase UI, here we've assumed that there is wage bargaining and so wages are going to go up and so firms are going to be less willing to hire workers when UI is higher, just because workers are having better outside adoption, which command higher wages. So the labor demand is going to be depressed on top of uh, the labor supply. So we have a second effect that hasn't appeared so far because so far we never took into account um, the uh, increase in wages caused by UI. But now we have it. So uh, we have a new labor demand and it's going to be lower. So maybe something like this. Uh, so this is the labor demand theta d at the new UI prime, okay? So there is a drop in labor demand. So that's the second effect. And in fact, the equilibrium therefore is going to be here at this point. And so employment, in fact, will be, oops, sorry, employment will be here at a lower level than we would have thought if we hadn't taken into account the drop in, uh, the drop in labor demand. Okay, so <clears throat> several things. So first of all, what is that new channel through which a UI affects the labor market? So this, you know, here we have also, we move from that orange point here the pink point here. Oops. So this is a new channel through which, uh, through which UI, UI affects the labor market. Essentially what happens is that UI, when it goes up, it uh, increases wages and so it depresses job creation. So not only UI is going to depress search effort and on the supply side, it's also going to depress job creation on the demand side. Okay? So that's what we can call uh, a job creation channel. Uh, which, uh, which says that, uh, so uh, basically uh, it says that you know, job creation drops, vacancies uh, fall uh, when UI goes up. And here it's caused because this drop in job creation arises because the wages have, have gone up. Okay, uh, so now we have this extra channel. So you remember in the first model we saw with job rationing, tightness would go up when uh, when UI would go up. Here it's the opposite. Here, in fact, tightness is falling when uh, when UI goes up. So in fact, the tightness here, which you can call as this, is lower. Okay, so it's a totally different thing, and this is caused by the fact that wages are going up. Okay, and if we measure the macro elasticity, so you remember the effect, the increase in unemployment or the reduction in employment that's caused by UI, but going from one equilibrium to the other, what do we see? Well, we see that macro elasticity is actually bigger than the micro elasticity. Because it would be here. That's our microelasticity, and that's much more than the microelasticity above. So here, basically, what this is saying is that if you just take an individual worker, change their UI and look at how their probability to find a job is affected, this would understate what you would observe if you change UI for all the workers in the, uh, in the labor market. Because once you do that, actually wages are, are affected, labor demand drops, and so the effects are actually compounded once you change UI for everybody. Okay, uh, so it's a totally different setup here. Um, 
And so then it becomes, you know, an empirical question whether in reality we see tightness going up or tightness going down. Um, if you want to compare between models, what happens? Um, so let's summarize, let's summarize all the effects that we've seen in this model. What have we seen? So first of all, of course, we've seen that as in all the other models, when you increase UI, employment is going to drop and unemployment is going to increase. So that's true everywhere. Here we have a new thing. Tightness, you know, went up in the first model, stayed the same in the uh, second model. Here, actually, tightness is dropping. Uh, what happens to uh, search effort? Well, of course, if you have less tightness and you have a more generous UI, of course, search effort, yes, there's no doubt it's going to drop. What happens to wages? The so wages didn't change in the other models, but here wages are going to go up. And then how do the micro and micro elasticities compare? Well, here it turns out that the micro elasticity of UI of an employment with respect to UI, which is uh, computed taking tightness as given, so which is computed by just looking at one individual worker, will be actually less be understating the micro elasticity of some, something completely different from uh, what we've seen earlier. Okay, um, so these are the effects. So, um, different matching models, therefore, we, you know, have different. Um, prediction for the effect of UI on the labor market. So something that's clear is that across all these models, if you increase UI, you're going to increase unemployment and you're going to reduce employment. That's very clear. Um, what happens to tightness on the other hand depends a bit on the model. And, uh, you know, if you have job right running, tightness is going to go up. If you just have a matching model with rigid wage, tightness is not going to change. If you have kind of a classical matching model with wage bargaining, and the linear production function, we've just seen that tightness was going to fall when you increase UI. So all these different models have different predictions. Now, um, in this course, what, what I've tried to argue is that if you want to capture the, uh, a possible lack of jobs in the economy, if you want to be consistent with the presence of um, queues of workers in recession, you need to have the matching model with job rationing, you know, the third iteration of the matching model. Um, which has both rigid wages and a downward sloping labor demand. And it turns out that the evidence on UI actually confirms that assessment um, in the sense that um, if you try to see whether an, an increase in UI increases tightness or reduces tightness, uh, most of the evidence points to uh, tightness going up actually when uh, UI goes up. So there is kind of a, a range of uh, findings, but the most uh, kind of, uh, at most, you find that tightness doesn't respond to UI. There is uh, one paper that finds that. And then all other papers find that uh, tightness increases somewhat when UI increases. Some papers find that tightness doesn't increase very much, and some papers find that tightness increases quite a lot uh, when you reduce UI. So all of this evidence on UI is also consistent and supportive of the uh, matching model with job ration. And, um, I mean, it, it's kind of a growing literature because there were a lot of work on UI that was uh, spurred by the Great Recession in the US, where there was a big policy debate about um, how to design UI in recession. And this is kind of coming back now in this uh, um, coronavirus recession, uh, where we see also we saw a big extension in the generosity of UI initially early in the recession, and now there's a debate about whether that should be continued or not. Um, so I expect that some more empirical work will come to try to assess the effects of UI and try to figure out whether an increase in UI you know, raises tightness uh, or not. And uh, so that's kind of that's a very active area of research. Uh, you know, if you're interested in empirical work, it's not very easy, but it's very active. Uh, and and then, you know, and there are roughly like two ways that people take to do that. So some people are able, I mean, have data to actually measure uh, tightness because they have data on vacancies, they have data on search effort, so you can measure tightness and see how tightness responds to an increase in UI. 
Uh, and some people instead uh, try to compute this micro and micro elasticity that I've uh, talked about. So try to compare the effect of a change in UI for an individual with a, uh, the effect of a change in UI for an entire market. And using a sophisticated econometrics techniques they are comparing the micro and micro elasticity. And what most of these people find is that um, micro elasticities uh, tend to be smaller than micro elasticity. So if you just look at search effort, there's quite a big response of search effort to an increase in UI. But then once you take into account the change in search effort and the change in tightness, you see that actually the change in unemployment is not as large as what you would have uh, imagined if you had only looked at effort keeping tightness constant. So that means that the micro elasticity is actually less than the micro elasticity. And hence, um, the model with um, job rationing seems to be here again, a better description of what's going on in the labor market.